Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Breskies and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to do my February reading roundup. All right, so before we get started, a couple of things. First, can we talk about this glitter and how it is now my entire personality? Big shout out to one of my favorite ASM artists, Best Life by Brooke ASMR. She often wears glitter like this and I was so inspired. I went ahead and got some of my own because I literally used to do this all the time as a child. This was my aesthetic as a child. And so it just brings me back. And so if you see this glitter in every single video, just mind your business because I'm loving it. It is giving me life. Also, I really quickly just wanted to announce that for the month of March, I'm participating in a charity event. It is called sit-ups for pups and the goal is that all participants collectively are supposed to do 1.2 million sit-ups to bring awareness to the 1.2 million dogs that are euthanized every year in shelters around the country and 1.2 million is a horrifying number especially since the majority of these animals are healthy and adoptable dogs as you all know rescuing is very important to me i am a big advocate for rescuing and animal welfare and so every single march i do participate in this i will be committing to 1,000 sit-ups for the month of march but there is also a fundraising component to this that participants can do if they want to and I will be. I'm going to try to raise $500 for this charity and for every single dollar that is donated I will be doing one additional sit up. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in donating to I will try to remember to leave the link down below for you so that you can donate. So I just wanted to mention it here but anyway enough of that let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. This is the second in a new video series that I'm doing on my channel where every single month I'm going to be doing a reading roundup and it's going to incorporate a few things. I'm briefly going to run through all of the books that I read for the month. I'm I'm going to give you my star ratings and then I'm going to give you a few bookish stats. I will then do the haul for the month, the unhaul for the month, and we will balance the books to try to determine if I have less books now on my physical TBR than I did when I started the video. And just as a reminder, I'm no longer doing formal sit down wrap ups on my channel. If you are interested in my full in depth thoughts on the books that I'm reading, you will have to go ahead and watch the bi weekly reading vlogs that I'm putting out. Although, in all honesty, those bi weekly reading vlogs themselves are pretty much just the same length as a normal wrap up would be on my channel, so it's not too terribly different. I just find it's the easiest way to be able to share my thoughts and feelings on these books. So now let's go ahead and quickly run through all of the books that I read in February and my star rating. The very first book that I read in the month of February was The Chain by Adrienne McGinty and I gave it 3.5 stars. Next I read Killers of the Flower Moon by David Grant and I gave that four stars. Next I read Fractured, the second book in the Will Trent series by Karen Slaughter and I also gave that four stars. I reread Red Rising by Pierce Brown and this time I gave it a four stars. Next I read No One Can Know by Kay Alice Marshall which I also gave a four stars. Next was Happy Place by Emily Henry, which I gave a 3.5 stars. Then When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean, which was a very disappointing three stars. Next, I read The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins, which I gave 3.5 stars. Next was The Teacher by Frieda McFadden, which was four stars. Not a Sound by Heather Guttenkopf was three stars. Hello Beautiful by Anna Politano was also three stars. Confess by Colleen Hoover was four stars. Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir was four stars. And Dachshund Through the Snow by David Rosenfeld was three stars. Now let's go ahead and get into the bookish stats. For the month of February, I completed 14 books. Out of those 14 books, I had zero one star, 1.5 star, two or 2.5 star ratings. I had four three star ratings, three 3.5 star ratings, and seven four star ratings. Out of the genres, I read two contemporary, one crime fiction, one literary fiction, three mysteries, two sci-fis, four thrillers, and one true crime. And of course, all 14 of the books that I read in the month were novels. Y'all know that I really don't read comics or graphic novels, and very rarely do I read a novella. So almost every single month 100% of the books that I read are going to be novel formats. And then in terms of source 13 of them were listened to 100% on audio and one of them was a mixture that was Red Rising which I listened to and read so I read that one immersively. In terms of where I listened to them five of them were from Audible, six of them were from Everand, and three of them were gotten from my library or the Libby app. And in terms of audience all 14 of the books that I completed in the month of February were adult. However I will say that I got most the way through Defending the Dawn by Bridget Kemmerer and that is more classified as young adult slash new adult, but that will officially be going into my March statistics since I didn't fully finish it here. And then in terms of author stats, eight of the books that I read were from authors that I had read from before. Five of the authors were new to me and one of them was a debut, meaning the book that I read was their debut. They may no longer be a debut author. They may have other publications out, but the book that I read was actually their debut book. Those were all the books that I read in the month of February and those were my bookish stats. Now let's go ahead and start balancing the books. After I finished January, I believe I had 
65 total books on my physical TBR. Out of all the books that I read for the month of February, six of those books were on my physical TBR prior to the start of February, meaning they were already on my TBR when the month began. And so those six, I can go ahead and cross off my physical TBR because I have now read them. All right, now let's go ahead and get into all the books that I hauled for February. So the very first book that I hauled for February was this beautiful fairy loot edition of The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrienne Young. Y'all know that I read this book last year and absolutely adored it. It was one of my favorite books of last year. And so when fairy loot announced a special edition, I absolutely had to jump on it. Look at how stunning this is, y'all. Those are the sprayed edges. That is the back. And then here is this beautiful bronze foiling. It's the spine. Nothing on the back. And then they also have some gorgeous end pages as well. Here are the back ones. So even though I technically have not read this edition, this book has been read. So it Will not be added to my TBR. Then I grabbed the copy of Fractured by Karen Slaughter. This again is the second book in the Will Trent series, which I did read in February, and I'm trying to read Karen Slaughter to zero, and of course I want to have her entire collection on my shelves, so I had to go ahead and pick this one up after I finished the book. And again, because I read this in February, it is not going onto my TBR. And I wanted to mention really quickly something that I'm doing with the books that I'm receiving as gifts from the Facebook wishlist gifting group that I'm a part of. Y'all know that I'm a part of two groups on Facebook that does regular monthly wishlist gifting. One is purely a gifting group, and the other is just a group that happens to do wishlist gifting. And so the group that I'm a part of that is purely for gifting, I am not opening the books that I'm receiving. Instead, I'm setting them aside. And when it comes near December, my husband is actually going to open and wrap all of those books. And I'm going to do an advent calendar, a 12 day advent calendar. And once every two days, I'm going to open the book and I'm basically going to try to read the book. Now, obviously there are some stipulations to that. Like if it's the sequel to a series that I'm not ready to read yet or something like that, I will have to make other arrangements. But for the most part, that is the plan. Even though technically I did haul it in February, I did not open it or add it to my TBR. So it's not going onto my TBR numbers. Instead, I'm probably going to add them to my TBR numbers in December as I am opening them. And of course, if I don't read them, they are going to stay on my TBR number. But I just wanted to go ahead and mention them here because technically I did bring a book into my home that I assume is unread. I don't have many books on my Amazon wish list that I have already read, but for now it is not going onto my TBR or my shelves or anything like that because I don't actually know what it is. And then of course, y'all know I had to haul House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass. This is the third book in her Crescent City series and she is a chonker y'all. I'm definitely looking forward to getting to this one but I cannot because I first need to read A Quarter Silver Flame. So I do not know when or if this is going to get read anytime soon but I do have it and it will absolutely be added to my physical TBR. Next in the month of February I was so very kindly gifted The Teacher by Frieda McFadden. This is one that I was absolutely not expecting. It was kindly sent to me by Jarrett. She is one of my subscribers. She is somebody that regularly attends my weekly sprints and I had the pleasure of meeting her at the Louisiana Ren Fair and so I was very surprised when this came in the mail to me. It was from her and all of her friends that I met at the Ren Fair and I was so very surprised. And of course I dove right into this because I absolutely love Frieda McFadden. This one was no different. I had a great reading experience with this one. I gave it a four star and because I read it, it is not going on my physical TBR. Also in February, y'all know that I had to haul The Women by Kristen Hanna. Kristen Hanna is one of my favorite authors of all time and Book of the Month regularly feature her books. And so when I saw this, I snagged it instantly. Really the only reason why this didn't get read in February is just because it's on a hold at my library. Anytime a book is not readily available on Everand, I first go to my library and put it on hold so that I do not have to use an audible credit. And so naturally this is a very popular release and I'm going to be waiting some time to read this. So for now it is going on my physical TBR, but I will be reading it as soon as I can. And then I already mentioned Defend the Dawn. This was another one that was sent to me in February from the gifting group that I am actually opening. And I am currently reading this. I will be finishing it very, very soon, probably in the coming days. So for that reason, I'm not going to add this to my TBR because I am actively reading it and it will basically be done by the time this video goes live. So this is one that I hold. This is the second book in her Defy the Night series. I really enjoy Bridget Kemmerer. I've loved absolutely everything that I've read by her and I think that she's a solid YA slash new adult fantasy author and I'm enjoying my experience with this one so far. I also received a few other gifts in the month of February. The first was the Mina Lima edition of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I received this because I participated in the virtual reading retreat that is hosted by the booktube besties. It's Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand, Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library, Amanda from On the Middle Shelf, and Krista from Books and Jams. They hold a virtual reading retreat typically twice a year and I finally managed to snag a spot and I was also kind of helping them in some ways and I proposed a wishlist gifting event to kind of commemorate the retreat. My gifter was so kind, she spoiled me greatly, and she sent me the Mina Lima edition of Prisoner of Azkaban. Those books are absolutely stunning. They are incredibly interactive. I haven't actually read one of those editions yet, but I hope to soon, and Prisoner of Azkaban is my absolute favorite Harry Potter book, and all of my Harry Potter collection is actually at work. I've showed it a few times on my channel. That book is already at work, which is why I don't have it here. And then Amanda from On the Middle Shelf kindly sent me two books as gifts for helping with the retreat, which she absolutely did not need to do, but 
but I was so grateful and so surprised. The first one that she sent me was The Haunting of Maddie Claire by Simone St. James. I have really enjoyed Simone St. James in the past, especially her more contemporary books. She has a few backlist titles that are more historical in nature, and this is one of them. This is set in 1920s England, and it follows our main character, Sarah Piper, who is temporarily hired to assist with basically a ghost haunting, and she is meant to go there and try to help get the ghost to cross over because the ghost hates men. And so you're following her journey there. And I actually really, really enjoyed this. I was a little bit hesitant because unless it's straight up historical fiction, I typically don't like historical romances or historical fantasy or historical paranormal or anything like that. But this one was actually really solid in my opinion. And I think it's one of my new favorite Simone St. James's. So I'm looking forward to reading the rest of her backlist as well. And I'm certainly excited to read her newest release, which just came out and was featured on Book of the Month for March. So Simone St. James for sure is an author I hope to read to zero someday. And also I pretty much read that one as soon as it came in. So that is not being added to my physical TBR. But this last gift that was sent to me is one that's being added to my TBR. Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. I do have this on hold at my library and I will get to it as soon as possible. I'm going to be honest y'all and I'm very scared to get to this one. I absolutely loved In My Dreams to Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. I loved it. It's one of my favorite dark academia, but I was extremely disappointed by The Last Housewife. And this one is actually, believe it or not, one of the lowest rated books on my TBR, which I was not expecting. So a lot of people are not enjoying this book and I'm really scared since I really didn't enjoy The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, but I have it. I'm going to give it a shot because I'm determined to read every single unread book that I bring into my home in 2024. I'm not allowed to unhaul it unless I've at least tried to read it. And so I am certainly going to try this and pick this up. And I truly hope that I love this. I truly hope that I have a much better reading experience with this than I did The Last Housewife. And if I don't, I think Ashley Winstead is not going to be the author for me. So I just might have to accept that In My Dreams I Hold a Knife was like a one-off Ashley Winstead for me. So we're going to see. And then the very final book that I hauled in the month of February was the adult book only fairy loot book, A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. I've actually never read anything by Danielle L. Jensen, but I know that she's pretty popular in the fantasy slash fan row genre. This cover is stunning. It is very, very different from the original cover, which I will try to remember to pop over here so you can get a peek. But this is absolutely beautiful. I wasn't sure if I was interested in this one, but I'm interested enough just based on how it looks. So there is the cover. There is the spine. There's the back. Here's a naked hardcover with some beautiful gold foiling. And then of course we have some beautiful end pages. So I believe this is actually a Viking fantasy, which I truly do not know if it's my thing, but it says, a woman blessed by the gods battles to unite a nation under a power hungry king while also fighting her growing desire for his fiery son. In this Norse inspired fantasy romance from the bestselling author of the Bridge Kingdom series. That's the one I was thinking of. That's the one that I hear quite a lot about. So I am definitely willing to give this one a try. It is already on my physical TBR. So it's another one that's being added and I'm excited to try this. All right, everybody. So that is the haul. And if I'm keeping track correctly, that currently means I am now at 63 physical books on my TBR. But let's go ahead and talk about the few that I'm actually unhauling. So the first one I have here is When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. This was one of the only backlist book of the month books that I had remaining on my shelves. And I was excited to get to it because it sounded like something right at my alley. But unfortunately, this was the epitome of mediocre. This is truly a book that exists. And I read it. I was not impressed by it at all. Literally everything was super generic and not fleshed out. And I was just very disappointed in my reading experience. I have already included this in the books taken off of my TBR because I did read it in February. So unhauling it is not going to do anything further to my TBR numbers, but it is definitely going. I'm also unhauling Addicted to You by Krista and Becca Ritchie. I have mentioned this before, but I originally had this plan to do a vlog based on really popular spicy book talk books. And these were all romance books that I'd heard a lot about and they were kind of piquing my interest. So I purchased a whole bunch of them and ultimately I ended up deciding to scrap the vlog, but I was trying to decide which of the ones I truly had a big desire to read. And this is not one of them. And I've heard a lot of really mediocre or bad things about this since I asked y'all's opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and trust you and get rid of that. Same thing with Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. This is another really popular one, dark romance that I've heard a lot about. I believe this is like a mob romance and I really just don't think that's my thing. And so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one as well. And then these last two are actually Fairy Loot special editions that I had every intention of reading. But since hauling them, I've heard a lot of really mediocre to negative things about them. And y'all know that I do not read fantasy unless I can read it immersively. So listening to it and reading it with my eyeballs. And so because I can only do that a handful of times during the year, I have to be very, very selective about the fantasy books that I want to read. And unfortunately, these are no longer up there on the priority list. So I have Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. This is another beautiful, stunning fairy loot edition. At first, I was really hyped to get to it. But again, I've heard some pretty negative things about this one recently. And this is another one that is one of the lowest rated books on my TBR, surprisingly. And I just don't want to waste my time on it. And then this one is actually a very, very new release, The Hurricane 
Wars by Thea Guanzon. I was actually really hyped to get to this one. This had been going around and from what I understand it's supposed to be some kind of like Raylo based romance which I'm not mad at. I'm not sick of that at all. I know a lot of people are but that's not really why I wanted to read it. I had just heard some interesting things about the synopsis. Then Becca from Becca and the Books recently read this and she didn't like it and I think I'm gonna trust her opinion on that one. However if you have read this one and you loved it and you think I might enjoy it please comment and let me know. I possibly could be swayed about this one but for now I think I'm gonna go ahead and let it go because I think there are people out there who would be very very excited to get this stunning beautiful edition of it. I mean look at that y'all. So I know that a lot of people are going to be really excited to get to this one but I'm willing to take your thoughts and feedback into account on this one so please let me know what you think. All right everybody so I believe if my numbers are correct I am down to 59 books on my physical TBR which is not too shabby. I got six books off of my TBR which is phenomenal and I hope to keep up that trend. Please comment down below and let me know what you think of this video series if you are enjoying the way that I'm doing these or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and leave me a ghosty emoji in honor of The Haunting of Addie Claire by Simone St. James and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week one on Wednesdays one on Sundays and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time y'all. Bye.